Iran's army has launched a large military drill near the country's border with Azerbaijan in a show of force amid tensions with its neighboring country, partly linked to Azerbaijan's close ties with Israel. State television showed footage of tanks, helicopters, artillery, and soldiers being deployed in an unspecified area in northwestern Iran. The army also said it was testing a locally manufactured long-range drone and other achievements for the first time. Iran has openly said it is concerned about Azerbaijan's close military ties with its arch-foe Israel, whose provision of high-tech assault drones and other equipment to the Azerbaijani army is thought to have helped tip the balance in its favor during its 44-day war with Armenian forces last year. Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian warned that Iran does not tolerate the presence and activities of the Zionist regime against its national security and will do whatever is necessary in this regard. During the military drill, Kayamers Hadari, the commander of the Iranian army's ground forces, told that Iran is also concerned about the presence of fighters that Azerbaijan brought in during last year's fighting over the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh. Iranian officials have been making claims about Israeli military activity in the region. Most recently, Iranian foreign minister said on October 6 that Tehran was deeply concerned by Israel's presence in the Caucasus. Azerbaijan used Israeli-made armed drones in a brief conflict with Armenia last year, and ties have continued to develop since then, with an Azerbaijan trade office opening in Tel Aviv this summer. Iran now says Israeli military advisors are active in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan has denied such claims, with Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokeswoman Leila Abdullayeva saying on October 4, we do not accept the allegations about the presence of any third forces near the Azerbaijan-Iran border because these views have no basis. Israel's ambassador to Azerbaijan, George Deek, has arguably not helped matters by stepping up his criticism of Iran on Twitter and saying, in a video posted on September 1, that I have been near the border many times. On the other side, Azerbaijan's President Ilham Aliyev said during an interview that he was surprised by the planned military exercise. Every country can carry out any military drill on its own territory. It's their sovereign right. But why now, and why on our border? He said, pointing out that this would be the first time since the fall of the Soviet Union that Iran is making such a show of force so close to the border. Rahim Rahimov is explaining some details of the current crisis. Tehran launched the second phase of these exercises, codenamed Conquerors of Haber, on October 1. The moniker refers to the historic Battle of Haber in present-day Saudi Arabia, in which Muslim fighters defeated a Jewish force. Brigadier General Qayyamers Hadari attributed the significance of the drills to what he depicted as the overt and covert presence of the Zionist regime's proxies and the possibility of a significant number of ISIS terrorists in regional countries. Baku rejected the Iranian accusations. Azerbaijan's various military exercises in recent weeks may have served as a trigger for the Iranian maneuvers. Indeed, the Iranian side criticized the Azerbaijani Turkish naval drills in the Caspian Sea, held earlier in September. Tehran's argument was based on the provision of the Convention on the Legal Status of the Caspian Sea, signed in 2018 by the literal states, including Iran and Azerbaijan. According to that accord, no military of a non-literal state can be present in the Caspian Sea. But the problem is that Iran has yet to ratify the Caspian Convention, and so the document has still not legally come into force. Subsequent Azerbaijani-Turkish-Pakistani Special Forces drills in Azerbaijan were another trigger for Iran in light of Tehran's uneasy relations with Islamabad. Fatah Hossein Maleki, a leading member of the Iranian parliament's National Security and Foreign Policy Committee stated that the drills carried out by the governments of Azerbaijan, Pakistan, and Turkey are worrying. Last but not least, Azerbaijani and Turkish special forces conducted renewed exercises in the direct vicinity of the Lachin Corridor, which physically connects the Armenian-populated parts of Karabakh to the Republic of Armenia and is currently guarded by Russian peacekeepers. While these maneuvers were a source of concern for Moscow, they also somewhat affected Tehran. It is via this corridor that Iranian trucks have been delivering various cargoes to Karabakh Armenians without Baku's permission. 
Azerbaijan recently blocked Iranian trucks traveling to the Armenian populated parts of Karabakh along the Lachin Corridor Road, short sections of which pass through the occupied Azerbaijani territory, and Azerbaijani authorities arrested several Iranian drivers making this trip all of which further roiled bilateral tensions. Maleki urged Baku to reconsider its recent actions and not to obstruct trade between Armenia and Iran. Otherwise, the resulting problems will impinge on Baku more. In his interview, Aliyev posed another question to Tehran. Is this market of 25,000 Armenians really so important? Is this trade really so significant that you display such blatant disrespect for Azerbaijan? With Washington's encouragement, Georgian Prime Minister Irakli Garibashvili has reportedly been mediating between Yerevan and Baku, presumably one of the reasons for his September 29 visit to Baku. And he apparently communicated Armenia's desire to reopen talks directly to Turkish President Erdogan. However, Erdogan declared that any negotiations with Yerevan had to be preceded by Armenia's opening of the transport corridor between Azerbaijan and its Nakhchivan exclave. Still, the potential thaw between Armenian and Turkey-Azerbaijan fuels nervousness in Iran. In particular, Tehran interprets the opening of what official Baku calls the Zanjazer Corridor through southern Armenia, along the Iranian border, as a change in international borders. General Hidari warned that a possible weakness in Armenia to protect its borders gives no reason to other countries to change the borders. The Islamic Republic will not allow that. Another high-ranking Iranian general, Mohammad Pakbar, the commander of the Islamic Revolution Guard's core ground forces, declared that any geopolitical change in the region would be a red line for Tehran. In turn, President Aliyev has repeatedly emphasized that Azerbaijan drastically disrupted the geopolitical reality in the South Caucasus through the Second Karabakh War, describing the Shusha Declaration on Allied Relations with Turkey as the greatest celebration of the new geopolitical reality. The Zanjazer Corridor epitomizes this new regional reality, the Azerbaijani leader stressed. On October 4, Aliyev visited the border region, where the Iranian exercises were taking place to condemn Tehran's accusations and urged the latter not to meddle in our Azerbaijan's affairs. A day earlier, Iranian Supreme Leader Khomeini had tweeted, those who dig a hole for their brothers will be the first to fall into it. The Azerbaijani-Iranian disagreements will persist and likely reverberate in increasingly novel manifestations. It should surprise no one that an Iranian media outlet recently called for establishing an Iranian military base in the southern Armenian region of Sinek, where the Zanjazer Corridor is to pass through, as a more effective alternative to holding military exercises. Small new arguments continue to flare up, adding to the sense of geopolitical shifts. Azerbaijan's Interior Ministry said that the Baku office of Ali Akbar Ahiknejad, a representative of Iran's supreme leader, has been closed. The official reason was that it was part of measures to battle the coronavirus pandemic. The Iranian embassy in the city has been pushing for it to be reopened.